Good morning. Welcome to Hope Fellowship of Somerset. We meet every Sunday at 10 a.m. Today we're starting the year off uh, in Genesis. There are things in Genesis, especially the, uh, the um, good news message. We have uh, the name of Elohim, which is triune, and I'm going to explain why his name is triune. We are starting the year off in the beginning. And we should not be ashamed of our beginnings. Every year we start anew. This year is no different. We have things in the, in the world going on today that are chaotic. A lot of fraud and uh, theft of our, against our president and his family. And we are standing on a precipice of the uh, soon coming rapture. And I'm looking forward to getting out of this world. It, and it really is going to hell in a handbasket. Genesis describes the beginning of the universe. The universe and all it contains was created by Elohim. Today is January 10th, 2021. A narrow escape. Reverend Douglas Johnson was not known for, to be the best of drivers. One Sunday, he was driving home from worship when, unfortunately, he had a minor bump in the, with, a, with a cyclist. The poor man was knocked off his bike into the ditch. The pastor naturally stopped his car, got out, and profusely apologized. He gave the cyclist his business card in case he needed help. He told the man he should not hesitate to ask him for help. As the man rode home, he looked at the card which said, Reverend Douglas Johnson is very sorry he missed you today. Well, I thought it was funny. All right, I got a giggle, okay? But they're not running me out on a rail, so I'm going to be okay today. Uh, well, my wife, uh, maybe. Re the scripture reading for this morning is Genesis 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep water. The Ruach Elohim was hovering over the water. Then Elohim said, Let there be light. So there was light. Elohim saw the light was good. So Elohim separated the light from the darkness. Elohim named the light day, and the darkness he named night. There was evening, then morning the first day. The book of Genesis contains everything we need to know about the creation of the universe and all it contains. All built by Elohim. I was going to say that it was built Elohim tough, but it still uh, means the same thing as far as I'm concerned. Genesis provides humanity with a simple statement proclaiming that Elohim created the heavens and the earth. It is one of the most challenging concepts in scripture confronting the modern mind. The vast galaxy we live in spins at the incredible speed of 490,000 miles per hour. But even as fast as this is, our galaxy, the Milky Way, still takes at least 200 million years to make one rotation. There are over one billion other galaxies just like ours in the universe. The, some scientists teach the number of stars in creation is equal to all the grains of all the sand on all the beaches of the earth. The co this complex universe of spinning stars functions with remarkable order and efficiency. To believe the universe evolved requires more faith than believing Elohim authored these amazing statistics. Elohim created a truly miraculous universe. Elohim did not need to create the universe. He chose to create it. Yahweh is love and his love is best expressed toward his human creation above all. 1 John 4, 7 and 8 declares, Dear friends, let us love one another, because love is from Yahweh, and everyone who loves has been fathered by Yahweh and know Yahweh. The person who does not love does not know Yahweh, because Yahweh is love. Elohim created the universe and humanity as an expression of his love. We cannot merely explain Elohim's creation in scientific terms. 
Yahweh Elohim created our universe because he loves us. Keep in mind, Elohim's word does not contain the subject of evolution. Its worldview assumes Yahweh created the universe. Elohim's word's view of creation is not in conflict with true science. Elohim's word rejects any worldview that says that the universe has no creator. True and honest believers who have struggled against evolution truly understand that triune Elohim is its creator. Believers, pastors, teachers, and theologians must be careful not to use, misuse Elohim's word and try to make it say what it doesn't say. Students of science must not make science say what it doesn't say. The most important aspect of having this discussion is not the process of creation, but the origin of creation. The universe was not produced by happenstance or blind probability. Yahweh created it. Romans 1.20 reveals, Since the creation of the universe, His, Yahweh's, invisible attributes, His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, because they understood through what has been made. So fallen humanity is without excuse. Elohim's word not only declares that the universe was created by Yahweh, but more importantly, it tells us who our Elohim is. It reveals His personality, his character, and his plan for his creation. Ephesians 3, 10, and 11 proclaims Yahweh's purpose in all this was to use the congregation to reveal his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was his eternal plan, which he carried through Messiah Yeshua Adonai. It also reveals the depth of Yahweh's love and deepest desire. That was and is to have fellowship and a relationship with the humanity he created. He created humanity to co-govern his universe. Yahweh pursued a relationship with humanity through the person of his son, Yeshua the Messiah, when he appeared on earth. In him we can find our creator, Elohim, who created the universe. The heavens and the earth are here. We are here. Yahweh created all that we see and can experience. It is the book of Genesis that we can understand. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens, had created heaven and earth. And that goes to point one. In the statement, in the beginning, we have to look at the original language. It is not the beginning of creation but the creation of space, time, and matter. In the beginning, not of eternity, but of the creation of the universe as described in Genesis 1. This marks the first break in eternity past. The creation story reveals much about Yahweh and ourselves. Genesis 1.1 simply says, In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. First, we learn about Elohim. He is creative. He is the creator. He is distinct from his creation. He is eternal and is sovereign over the universe. In Genesis, we also learn about our place in creation. Many have asked the question, how did Elohim create the heavens and earth and our vast universe? The answer has been a hotbed of debate. Some say the universe appeared in a sudden explosion. Some say Elohim started the process and the universe evolved over billions of years. Nearly every ancient religion has its own explanation over how the heavens and the earth came into existence. Almost every scientist has an opinion on the origin of the universe. Elohim's word also reveals that one creator, Yahweh, created the universe out of his great love and gave humanity a place in it. Isaiah 37, 16 declares, Yahweh, the commander of heaven's armies, Elohim of Israel, you are enthroned over the angels. You alone are Elohim and the kingdoms of the universe. You alone created heaven and earth. We will never know all the answers of how Yahweh created the heavens and the earth, but Elohim's word tells us that Yahweh did create it. The, that fact alone give, uh, uh, gives worth and dignity 
to all humanity. Yahweh is infinite. Yahweh is omnipotent. Yahweh is omnip omniscient. Yahweh is omnipresent. He has always been and will be the eternal I Am. Aye Asher Aye, the one who is and continues to be eternal Yahweh. Exodus 3.14 declares, Elohim answered Moses, Aye Asher Aye. This is what you must say to the people of Israel. Aye, Yahweh is, has sent me to you. When Yahweh used the verb to express his name, he used the, this form saying, I am. When his people refer to him as Yahweh, they use the third person masculine singular verb form. They declare, he is. Translating Aye as I will be does not effectively describe the eternal nature of Yahweh, except to restrict the use of his name from moving into the future. Since he is eternal, this description fails. The actual idea of the verb Aye certainly reveals that Yahweh is not bound by time. While he is ever present, he, is always, he will always be present, even in the future, and so Aye would embrace that truth. This is difficult to understand. Our finite man's ca minds cannot comprehend the infinite. For example, we can ca try to think of the highest number possible, but we cannot do it. Math is imperce uh, imperceptible. Elohim is the proper name for the one true Yahweh. Elohim means, uh, basically means strong one, mighty leader, and supreme deity. The name Elohim is plural in form and function and refers to triunity. The name Elohim indicates an overwhelming plentitude of power and majesty. Being plural, his name is revealed in the doctrine of the New Covenant revelation for the triune nature of Elohim. Hidden mysteries in the Trinity and Elohim's redemptive plan are found in Genesis 1. To understand the mysteries of Elohim's sacred name, we should begin in Genesis 1-1, the beginning. Genesis 1-1 is translated, In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. But in the Hebrew, it, it says, Barashit bara Elohim et ha shamayim viet haretz. From seven simple words. Barashit is the spelled beginning with the letter or Hebrew bet, be depicting in Hebrew pictography as a tent or house, symbolically meaning lineage, as in the house or lineage or in the royal house of David. The first letter in the first word, Barashit, is an enlarged bet. That means capitalized. When we see a capitalized letter in Torah, it is telling you to pay special attention to it as there is something of great significance there. Bet, in Hebrew, uh, equal to our letter B, is prefixed to a word and means in, by, or while. In this case, it means in. There are three in bets in Genesis 1-1, each representing a member of the Trinity. There are three present at creation, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A bet is made up of three was. Each wall represents a nail, representing the Messiah was pierced by three nails on the cross. The enlarged bet is placed before the word reshit, beginning. The pierced one was active before the beginning of creation, demonstrating Yeshua, our Messiah, was active from eternity past. Bet is followed by the resh, depicted as a man's head, the primary or highest person of rank. Aleph, depicted as an ox head, means the strong one, the Almighty, as in Yahweh is my strength. Hebrew word pictures also indicate that the root of the word bara is bar and can be seen as the seed of beginning the be uh, or beginning of the family. The meaning is the house or family of heads. Not one head, but heads. Bar, the son, combined with Rashid, says the son brought the universe he created into being 
with his power, and it is sustained with his life principle at the power of his command. The Hebrew root of Rashid is Resh Elif Shin, and means to begin, animate, begin motion, the first or supreme, create, become visible, grow, and develop, and to move violently with fire. We saw that on Mount Sinai. The Aleph signifies Elohim in Hebraic thought. When an Aleph is added to the end of Bar, it makes the word Bara. The word Bara come from the Hebraic characters reveals that the son of Aleph created. Colossians 1, 15 through 17 says, Messiah is the visible image of the invisible Elohim. He existed eternally before anything was created and is supreme over all his creation. For through him, Elohim created everything in the heavenly realms, which are the unseen dimensions, and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Aleph also describes the father as the strong one of the house with the letter bet. Father in Hebrew is ab, Aleph bet, and is referred to as the one who starts a family and provides for his family's need, family needs. Shin follows a resh and is portrayed as two teeth, meaning to consume or destroy. Yud is portrayed as an arm from the elbow to the fist, and it means it is done by the power of my efforts or my works. The tav, portrayed as two sticks in the form of a cross, means mark or covenant. The tav is the last letter of Barashit. This letter represents redemption or a covenant made by or through a cross. When we look at Hebrew pict pictography, we see that in the beginning actually provides a graphic depiction of the Son of Yahweh being consumed or destroyed by his own hands on a cross. Remember, he said, no one can take my life from me. I freely give it up, and I take it up again, didn't he? The name and title of our creator and sustainer Elohim is always described by singular verbs as the one and only true creator and sustainer of the universe and all it contains, the heavens and earth. Elohim is always used in the singular address to the Most High, but is plural in form. His name is used as a plurality of majesty to describe the great glory of our triune and almighty creator. We see the Trinity, or the triunity of persons, in the personal name and title of Elohim. Paul referred to this when he said that Messiah lives the fullness of deity and his divine nature. The Greek word for deity is, in this context, is theotes, and refers to the Trinity. Theos, its root, is the new covenant equivalent to Elohim. Both refer to the Most High, the triune mighty one. Each member of the Triune Most High is considered so completely unified that they are as one. All three persons of the Trinity shared in the creation of the universe in true unity as Yahweh Elohim. Deuteronomy 6.4 says, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is your Elohim. Yahweh is one. The Hebrew word for one is echad and means a multiplicity a diversity in a unified state of existence, being so united in purpose and plans that the members themselves are virtually indistinguishable. Genesis 1-2 says, The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep water. The Ruach Elohim was hovering over the earth. Now, what's interesting about this word hovering, it also means to vibrate. He was vibrating life into the universe. And, uh, through, and, and it's just amazing some of the depth that we see in Genesis. Likewise, we must not limit the infinite Yahweh by our finite understanding. 
The statement, the earth was formless and empty, provides the setting for Yahweh's creative narrative. Genesis 1, 3 through 5 declares, Then Elohim said, Let there be light. So there was light. Elohim saw the light was good. So Elohim separated the light from the darkness. Elohim named the light day, and the darkness he named night. There was evening, then there was morning, the first day. Darkness was eliminated on the first day of the after Yahweh created light. During the second and third days of creation, Yahweh gave form to the universe and all it contains, along with our solar system. During the next three days, Yahweh filled the earth with living beings of all species. He created them male and female, whether they were spiders and snakes, or human and animal, both small and great. Yahweh's Holy Spirit was actively involved in the creation of the universe. Yahweh de demonstrated for over 6,000 years his care and protection, which are still active in the days we have been living. There is yet another person not mentioned merely in the surface text. Messiah was there. In the old, cov old is concealed, but in the new is revealed. The Hebrew text is very interesting how it de describes light. The earth is seen in the feminine, feminine gender. However, the light is described in the masculine gender. In Genesis 1, 3, and 4, we see that the son of Yahweh, Adonai, the light of creation, is seen prominently. John 8, 12 says, Yeshua spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the universe. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Genesis 1, 3 says in Hebrew, Um, mer, alayim, ayay, or you I I which translated into English is and he is saying Elohim he will become light and he is becoming light who here will become and is becoming light Isaiah 42 6 and 7 proclaims I Yahweh have called you to do what is right I will take hold of your hand I will protect you I will appoint you as my promise to the people as my light to the nations you will give light, sight to the blind bring prisoners out of the out of prisons and bring those who live in darkness out of dungeons Yahweh spoke of the Messiah Yeshua our Savior that he is the light of the universe not only is the Messiah the light of the universe but he is also the life essence that gives the universe life and that goes to the next point Elohim named the day for light and the night for darkness. Each day received a numerical value. Each week had the num number value of 1 to 7 for each of its weekdays. Elohim named the light day and the darkness he named night. Elohim's word says that there was evening and there was morning, which was day one. The Catholic Church deemed it Sunday along with all the other gods of the names of our, of our days. Genesis 1, 5 through 7 says, Elohim named the light day, and the darkness he named light, night. There was evening, then there was more, the first day. Then Elohim said, Let there be a horizon in the middle of the water, in order to separate the water. So Elohim made the horizon and separated the water above and below the horizon. And so it was, and so it was. Sorry, I have dry hands and dry paper. All right, the Hebrew word used for named is kara, and it means to call, to call, or call out, recite, read, cry out, proclaim, to summon, invite, call for, call and commission, appoint, call and endow to name or title. Psalm 33, 4 through 7 tells us, the word of Yahweh is correct, and everything he does is trustworthy. Yahweh loves righteousness and justice. His mercy fills the earth. The heavens were made by the word of Yahweh, and all the stars by the breath of his mouth. 
He gathers the waters in the sea like a dam and puts the oceans in his, in his storehouses. Yahweh called out seven times in Genesis 1. Naming or blessing follows each act of creation. There is clearly a point being made beyond, what the, beyond the obvious idea of naming. He, what Yahweh says becomes. Psalm 33, 8 and 9 declares, Let all the earth fear Yahweh. Let all who live in the world stand in awe of him. He spoke, and it came into being. He gave the order, and there it stood. In Elohim's word, we see the act of naming, speaking into being, or creating, is an expression of his sovereignty. In Genesis 1, 5, Elohim is the sovereign ruler, even over the darkness of the universe. Evidence in the original Hebrew very clearly refers to a true 24-hour day, not a dispensation or a type of evolution which would try to describe and define a tw the 24-hour day as a season, age, or era. The Hebrew, day for, the Hebrew word for day is yom and refers to a literal 24-hour day. True, it can refer to a longer period of time, but in the context of Genesis 1, it can only be translated as a day not an age. When the Hebrew word yom is used with a numerical adjective, it refers to a literal day. Elohim's commandment to observe the Sabbath clearly favors this contextual inter interpretation. Another option is to translate the context as e evening came and then morning came. This translation closes the six days of creation. It follows Jewish thought of counting time from evening to morning. Day one started with the dark, continued through the light of creation of light, and ended with nightfall. Another alternative would, to be, would be to translate it, there was night, and then there was day, one day. Since daytime closes at evening and each night ends with the morning, the phrase indicated that the first day and night had been completed and called day one. Day seven is known as the Shabbat. Evening and morning cannot be misconstrued to, an, to describe an age, but only a day. Everywhere in the Torah, the word day, when used with a numerical adjective, means one solar day, or 24 hours. You have heard me say, what Yahweh our Elohim says is, what Yahweh our Elohim declares will become. Genesis 1 is where I got these from. Yahweh our Elohim spoke the universe into being. <coughs> Excuse me. Hebrews 1 3 reveals the sun radiates Yahweh's own glory and expresses the very character of Yahweh, and he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic Yahweh in heaven. The Hebrew word for horizon, which we uh, read <coughs> earlier, is rakiah, and means an extended surface, solid, expanse, horizon, a vault of heaven supporting waters above, wall that separates one thing from another. And that goes to the last point. Each day received a numerical value. Each week had the value of one to seven for each of its weekdays. On the second day, Elohim named the atmosphere sky. Yahweh created a vast body of water in the form of vapor surrounding the earth. He made it a canopy to create conditions on the earth that are similar to those inside a massive greenhouse. When Yahweh separated the water vapors of above the, from the sea waters below, he used vaporized water to create a nearly solid canopy around the earth at the outer edges of our atmosphere. He did this to avert the sun's harmful cosmic rays. This is why some theologians and scientists see the aging process was nearly one-tenth of its current speed permeating the long life, uh, permitting the long lifespans in Genesis. Thus, in the beginning, the water covered the entire earth. It was on day two the Pangea emerged from underneath the seawaters, which Elohim gave boundaries to keep her from being flooded. 
The water was to be restricted to an area to form ocean, the oceans. The picture depicted here is one of the dry land as a very large continent with oceans surrounding her to be populated by living beings. Genesis 1, 8 through 10 says, Elohim named what was above the horizon sky. There, there was evening, then morning, a second day. Then Elohim said, let the water under the sky come together in one area and let the dry land appear. And so it was. Elohim named the dry land earth. The water which came together he named sea. Elohim saw that it was good. In the Hebrew, the word earth in this context is a proper name given to the Pangaea. Her true name is Eretz. She is one-third of the total of the planet earth and the oceans took up two-thirds of her. The Hebrew word for sky is Shamayim and refers to the first heaven, the invisible heavens, the visible universe, the sky above, and the earth's atmosphere. The first heaven is what we can see. Then Elohim said, let the water under the sky come together. The word let is not in the original Hebrew. It is implied. It really says, Elohim commanded the water and sky to gather. If we translate, then Elohim said, let the water under the sky come together, it would actually say, Elohim commanded the water canopy under the atmosphere to converge over the dry land, the earth. Yahweh commanded the, the dry land appear. The Hebrew word for appear is ra'ah and means to see, look at, inspect, perceive, consider, to appear, present oneself, to be seen, to be revealed. The, in Hebrew, the word earth is eretz and means the whole earth as opposed to part, earth as opposed to heaven, earth and her inhabitants, referring to the dry ground as opposed to the sea. The Hebrew word for sea is yom and means to it means seas, lakes, oceans, rivers, and their tributaries. A tributary is a supply of water for the seas, lakes, oceans, rivers, and other bodies of water. Isaiah 45, 8, 9 reveals, I make light and create darkness. I make bl uh, blessings and create distress. I, Yahweh, do all these things. Rain down from above, you heavens, and pour out your righteousness. Pour down righteousness, you skies. Let the earth open. Let salvation and righteousness sprout. Let them spring up. I, Yahweh, have created them. Yahweh revealed his sovereignty when he set boundaries for the oceans. A point to note here is that no matter what the climate change people say, oceans will never trespass his boundaries. Only in the judgment of the flood, Yahweh caused those boundaries to be suspended. When the waters were collected and their boundaries were set, Pangaea emerged and the waters receded. Pangaea, a supercontinent that incorporated all the land masses of the earth, it was around the Pangaea that Yahweh commanded the ocean waters to be separated from her borders. Yahweh separated the waters by an expanse or firmament. The word for firmament or expanse is better translated as a heaven. As we have discussed, there are three heavens mentioned in scripture. The first heavens is the earth's atmosphere. The word translated in this context is sky. The Hebrew word is shamayim and is seen in the first heavens of Elohim's word and in the Talmud. The word Shamayim refers to all three heavens. The context with, with, within scripture will determine which one is addressed. In these contexts, the three heavens are earth, outer space, and heaven. The second heavens contain all the stars and the constellations. The second heavens is described in scripture as outer space. There, that is, this is where the sun, the moon, the stars, and the constellations abide. The third heavens contain heaven. Heaven's tabernacle and Yahweh's majestic throne, next to whom Messiah is seated in honor and glory. This is the third and highest of the three heavens. 
The horizon in this passage is Earth's atmosphere, which separated in the distinct forms of water. Yahweh provided a vast blanket of water vapor that formed a canopy which encapsulated the Earth. This canopy provided a greenhouse effect allowing warm temperatures evenly over the Earth. There were no windstorms, dust bowls, or famine as we have experienced. There was only lush vegetation. This canopy filtered out all the harmful ultraviolet rays so that health and longevity were abundant. The ca canopy contained the moisture necessary for the global flood that occurred during Noah's days. The flood was the cause of the change in climate, health, and longevity. Humanity lost its longevity after the global flood that took place in Genesis 7 and 8. It was indeed a massive global, not local, flood. Elohim's second day of his creative work is connected to his creative work of the third day. Elohim continued the process of separating the waters so that the dry land of earth emerged. Elohim completed day two. The land emerged from the ocean waters. The earth of Genesis 1 through 8 is not the same earth as we experience it these days because of the global flood of Noah's days. The Pangaea, which Yahweh named the earth, broke apart and separated shortly after the global flood in Genesis 7 and 8. The earth was fractured during the flood and broke into separate continents. Genesis 10:25 tells us, Two sons were born to Eber. The, the name of the one was Peleg, whose name means division, because in his day the earth was divided. In conclusion, Elohim made a seven-word declaration from the Hebrew to Moses as he wrote Torah. Barashit bara Elohim et ham shamayim viet ha eretz. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and earth. In its simplicity, Elohim clearly made a statement that no one, no thing, no angel, no power, nor, or any other such living being could create the heavens and the earth. Only Elohim, not anyone else. Where Moses wrote, the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep water, it really says the earth was totally empty and devoid of all living beings, both animal and plant life. The Holy Spirit worked with Elohim. He hovered over the earth, which at that time only consisted of sea or ocean waters. The earth had not yet emerged from the depth of the global ocean waters. Yahweh's Holy Spirit was active, act, actively involved in the creation of the universe. Yahweh demonstrated for over 6,000 years his care and protection, which are still, in, and still active in the days we are living. Another unnamed person is not mentioned on the surface test, text. Messiah was there. The Hebrew text in Genesis 1, 3, and 4 is interesting in, in how it describes light. It describes the light as a person, Adonai. The earth is seen in the feminine gender. However, the light is described in the ma masculine gender. Gender. In Genesis 1, 3, and 4, we see this, that the son of Yahweh, Adonai, the light of creation, is seen prominently. Elohim commanded the light, which is Adonai, to give his light to the universe. Furthermore, his life essence empowered the universe with light and his life. Darkness was virtually eliminated. Elohim commanded there be barriers between the different forms of water. They were the water on the earth, water vapor that permeated the earth with moisture, and the atmosphere called the sky. Elohim commanded the oceans to gather and move for the vast continent called the Pangaea, but named earth by Elohim. He created an unstoppable barrier between the oceans and the Pangaea. Finally, after Elohim separated the waters from the earth, he looked at what he had done to that point, declared it was all good. Even in his thoughts, Elohim created, creates. He never stops working. In benediction, Psalm 24, 1 through 7, the earth and everything in it, it, everything it contains are Yahweh's. The universe and all who live in it are his. He laid the foundation, its foundation on the seas and set it firmly on the rivers. Who may go up Yahweh's mountain? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has, a cl has clean hands and a pure heart, and does not long for what is false or lie, 
when he is under oath. This person will receive a blessing from Yahweh and righteousness from Elohim, his Savior. This is the person who seeks him, who searches for the face of the El of Jacob. It, Yahweh has blessed you and will protect you. Yahweh has smiled on you and has been gracious to you. Yahweh has shown you his favor and will give you his shalom, perfect and complete peace. Amen. Amen and amen.